It's just that, yeah. Uh, it's the button. Um, if you're on your no, Chrome, I know I've done it a million times. It's just like there's something happened yesterday in our meeting, and we all had to log off. And then I don't know. I'll I'm working on it. Okay, <laughs> you might want to shut down and restart your Chromebook. It might just need something like that. Um, maybe after the half hour, just do that. Might be time for it. Sometimes that does help refresh things. All right, so I'm going to quickly show you just a couple slides on Kami, um, and then really we're going to spend the half hour on the platform so I can kind of show you what it looks like. I think the best way to learn Kami is to actually practice and use it. Kami is a very collaborative um, website, so it does really allow for a lot of um, different ideas that you can do within the classroom. So anything that you typically would hand your students, uh, you know, whether they're in group work or doing an independent, anything you would hand them on paper, you can do in Kami. And that's really the, the best part about Kami is, um, you know, I often get that question as far as what can I do with a PDF? Or I have this worksheet and I really would still like to use it. It, it still has value. Um, how can I use it? And there are ways you can convert um, PDFs in Google Slides or, or you know, through Google Keep and, and different things. But what's easiest is really just to use Kami because Kami allows you to upload anything, any image, any photo, any um, PDF, any document that you have, and then it lets you annotate over it. So it becomes anything you typically would put up like on your Promethean board or your smart board or whatever, and you write on it, you could do the same things in Kami. The really great part about Kami is it does correlate right into your Google Classroom if you're a Google user. Um, I don't know if it does with Teams. I've never tried, so I can't answer that one, but I know it does with Google Classroom. And um, it does allow for collaboration. So it's something that I can send out a link to all of you and, and I'll do this in a little bit where you can actually practice and see what it looks like where everyone's working on the same document at the same time. Um, Kami is not totally free. Um, there is a cost to it. There are some features that you can use for free and there's some, um, some parts that are paid. Um, right now with, uh, with COVID-19, you can certainly, um, use it uh, for free and then I can give you a code to kind of give you at least a month to try it um, on the, the, the paid one. It's a very inexpensive uh, program though, like when you're looking at the cost of a lot of the different ed tech tools, this one tends to be very cost effective as far as um, districts tend to purchase it. Instead of purchasing it per teacher, they tend to purchase it district wide because it tends to be fairly inexpensive for districts to have. Um, just to kind of answer the one question that people always ask right from the beginning, yes, it is Adlaw 2D compliant um, if it is purchased through um, the Erie One BOCES. So, um, so you do have some extra uh, coverage there as well. Um, it's certainly something you can use without students and then you don't have to worry about that as well, but um, it depends on how you're planning to use CAMI. Um, for those of you who don't know me though, I realize that there's some new people on the call. Um, I'm Lori Guillen. I'm the Assistant Coordinator for Model Schools at Washington, Saratoga, Warren, Hamilton, and Essex BOCES that's located in Saratoga. Um, and I just do professional learning. So, um, you know, doing these little um, webinars every day has kind of been my, my thing since we've been home for the past 10 weeks. So let's talk a little bit more about CAMI and what it can do. So Kami, like I said, allows you to annotate on anything. So like I said, any PDF, any document, any worksheet that you typically would do, you can take a photo of it, you can scan it in, whatever you normally do to make it digital, you can write on it. So when I have to sign something, like I get a form and I need to actually put a signature on it, I use Kami for that because it lets me write right over a PDF and then send it in. It lets me fill in the boxes um, if there's different boxes that need to be filled out on a sheet. It does have a collaborative feature, but you can keep it just locked down to yourself. Think of it as your digital pen and paper. It does allow you to pull from anywhere. So like I said, you can upload anything. You can pull it right from your Google Drive, and I'm going to walk you through that process. Just like you would annotate on a piece of paper, you can highlight, you can write, you can draw on it. It does have some accessibility features with text-to-speech and speech-to-text. Um, it does have... Um, video and audio. So if you were grading student papers, this is a great place to do it because you can uh, circle and annotate and record yourself doing that to offer feedback to your students. Um, and it does, like I said, integrate with Google Classroom. It also has a really great feature that I would call it more the advanced feature on it. It has a merge and split document. So let's say you have a PDF that's 40 pages and you only want to assign pages three and four. 
um, to your students, it does allow you to split those documents out and just send the student those two um, those two pages that you wanted. In the past, what I would do is print out my entire PDF and then just photocopy or scan in the two pages I wanted. But with Kami, you don't have to do that extra step. You don't have to print anything. You can split and merge right within Kami. Um, so in order to get started with Kami, there's a couple things that you probably want to do. The first one is the Chrome extension. And the reason I say that is the Chrome extension just makes it so that way it's always available to you. So you'll see that I have the little K up on my Chrome toolbar here for my PDF and document annotation. Um, I already have it in Chrome, but it, it's a great one because when I click on this button, it will open Kami immediately for me. All right, so it says, where do you want to open whatever it is you have on the screen? Um, or do you want to grab something else? So you always have that option there. Um, so Kami is a great extension. Do you have to have it? No, but it's just really nice to have there because then when you open something, it, it'll give you the option to open it in Kami. So if, it, if a teacher sends you um, or a parent sends you a PDF or whatever, you can open it right in Kami to be able to write right on it. So it gives you that streamlined kind of feature. Um, it does have two other Chrome extensions that are available to you. The first one is screen capture. So you might do screen capture already where you um, maybe if, if you have a Mac, you're using shift command three or shift command four to do the whole page or part of a page. If you're on a Chromebook, you're probably using shift control three or shift control four. Um, but what this does is it allows you to do a screen capture and then pull it right into Kami. So um, it allows you to record what's happening on your screens and doing different things with that. So it's an option to screen capture. That is completely up to you if you want to do that one. The last one is the split and merge um, one. And what this does is allows you to grab whatever documents you have, move and uh, rotate the photo, the pages, and kind of organize your PDFs as you're putting them in there. Do you need to have this Chrome extension to use Kami? Absolutely not. But it is available to you to, um, to do through the add-on instead of having to go into Kami and doing it. So it's free to use, but in order to gather some more or to add more things, some of that will uh, go into that cost. And we'll kind Hi, of sorry to interrupt. I can't see what you're presenting. You can't see my screen? No. Can everyone else see my screen? Uh, I don't think so. I can yep. see it. Oh, well now it just, yeah. Now I it's see because it. I went away from it to see the, the the uh, one. So if I'm on here, do you see my screen? Yeah, so just getting you. So if you're not, I would um, log off and log back in. Maybe that just something glitched with it that you're not seeing my screen. Okay. Yeah. All right. Some of you are, some of you aren't. That's odd. All right, let me, un I'm going to stop presenting and start presenting again and see if I can't get that to work. All right, so we're going to try it for me. Give um, Unmute your microphones. Tell me, can you see my screen now? I can't see I can. the, the uh, chat. So can you see my screen? I can see it. I can Wonderful. see it, Lori. Yep. Wonderful. Thank you. I can see okay. it. So maybe there was a glitch on my end, but hopefully we can all see it now. OK, so um, the Chrome extensions there. So the login, um, I'm giving you this link because this login will take you uh, right to Kami. Um, it should give you a resource or you know just an easy way to get onto it. It does connect with your Google Classroom, like I mentioned. So I'm giving you a document that's going to show you how to connect your Google Classroom with Kami because I know we're not all Google users, but I wanted to make sure you had re this resource for you to use. Um, it's just taking a little while to load. There it goes. Um, but this will walk you through the process of getting your Kami and Google Classroom to talk to each other. Um, so you'll have that step-by-step -step guide. And I'm going to share this in the uh, in the chat in just a moment. And then Kami put together this amazing resource booklet um, that I'm sharing with you that has, oh, that did not go to the right link. Where is it? There it is. I'm going to change that link because it looks like I linked it wrong there. Um, let me do this. Share. Copy that link. This is how you do things on the fly, right? You got to fix things sometimes. Let's make sure we got it right now. There it is. Okay. 
So it has this great handbook um, that's 41 pages of how to use all of the tools. So I'm gonna walk you through it over the next 20 minutes on the website. But just so you know, if, if I go too fast or you wanna see something again, or you need more information of, uh, as far as how to use it, I'm giving you access to this handbook that's going to walk you through the toolbar and the menu bar, all the integration. So no, it doesn't integrate with Teams. It's Classroom, Canvas, and Schoology ways to use um, Cami across the curriculum. So it's going to walk you through all of that. So you're gonna have access to that as well. Um, and then finally, I'm going to show you while we're on that platform, how to use the toolbar and the menu bar. So let me share this with you. So you have that information. All right, Diane, you still can't see my screen? Um, I can't. You can't, that's so weird. All right, well, here's what I want you to do. I just sent you the link um, in the chat mm -hmm. uh, to the Google Doc, um, and I want you to go to the very last page, so page four of that Google slideshow that I gave you, and click the green um, words at the bottom that say, let's check them out. Um, and we're gonna go look right on the Cami site. So then you don't have to look on with me. You can be looking on on your own. For those of you who can still see mine, did I unshare that? I'm gonna share my screen again. You're welcome to split screen or um, just follow along on Cami, whatever way works for you. Okay, was everyone able to get to Cami from that link? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're gonna sign in um, using the sign in button at the top. Um, and when you click there, you're going to see a bunch of options come up. Open from Google Drive, open from computer, create a Google Classroom assignment, a blank page. And then for me, because I've used it before, I have any of my recent documents are going to be listed at the bottom. At the very top, you're going to see an OCR and a split and merge. The OCR, and I forget what it stands for, but it's what it does is it takes your PDFs and it tries to put it back into a read of um, being able to be read so that you have that text to speech feature. Um, so, it, um, so it's supposed to help with the accessibility. So if you have a document that has a lot of words on it, it may be able to convert it back so it, it becomes something that's readable. Um, not 100% perfect, but it's, just know that it's there. The split and merge option is where I was talking about if you had a very large PDF, like let's say I wanted to upload that Cami um, handbook, it has 40 pages. Um, I wouldn't maybe want all 40 pages to be pulled in, so I have that option. So I created one that we're gonna use together um, that should have opened up for you, but if it didn't, I'm gonna put that link directly in. So I'm gonna share this, just give me a moment, I see somebody put in the chat, something in the chat too. So anyone with the link can annotate. I'm gonna put this in the chat for you. Yes, this is being recorded for you. Okay, so I put in uh, the direct link to the same um, resource that I'm using right now. And I can see some of you are starting to get on there. See at the bottom of my screen, I can see your initials. So I can see all the collaborators coming on. So all I did was create a Google slide deck of um, backgrounds. Nothing more. I just um, downloaded uh, downloaded backgrounds of different templates that I use. And you can change the shape. I happen to do it landscape mode, but you certainly could do it in portrait mode or square, whatever shape you want it to go into to bring into Cami. Um, and then what you're going to see on your screen is that I have all of the pages of the um, that I pulled in these different templates that I put on different pages, um, just to show you some different ones. And then at the very bottom, just to show you the different types of paper that you can have, I put in a line piece of paper, a grid, and I also put in some music uh, paper. So you can see the different types of paper you can pull into or have right built into Cami. So let me show you what the dashboard actually looks like. And I know a lot of you said you can't see my screen for some reason, so I'm gonna say where it is so you can kind of look at it on your own. Um, in, I'm gonna start in the top left-hand corner where it says the word Cami, and I'm gonna go across the top first, and then I'll go down the side. Um, next to uh, Cami, I have a button that says EDU because I'm on a teacher license. Um, I'm a Cami hero, so I get the platform. Um, the next button over is the the tile, it allows you to kind of like set it up more like Google Slides. So if you click on it, now I can see all of the different pages of my Cami um, template gallery, however you want to look at it. I see each of the pages separate on the left-hand side and I can toggle between them. All right, so I have that. 
Up at the top, I also have a find in document. So if there's something I'm looking for and I have a long document, I can see that. The next button over is Google Drive. That's where I pulled this from. And then if I wanna save it somewhere else, I'm going to have that option through that button. As I continue across the top, I can see the title of the uh, one that I pulled in. So I pulled in this sam sample templates PDF. As I continue along the top, I can zoom out and zoom in. I can change how much I see of it based on the percentage. I can do full width, full, um, you know, I can change it to 50%, 75%, however I want to be able to view what I'm working on. So if you're working on something and, you, and it's kind of small writing, you can zoom in on it and then write on it, which is very helpful. Um, the next one over is allows you to open a file. So if I wanted something else, I can grab it. The little um, icon next to it is your share icon. And when I click on that, you're going to see that I have tons of resources um, from here. I get the link that allows for link sharing where people can annotate. I can also send this as something that nobody can annotate on. Then I'm sending it as just a, um, a copy of something. I can see all the people that have gotten in. Um, and I see that they have annotating rights. I can change whether or not collaborators have the access to be able to download and print and so on. So you have some different options there. Next to that share document icon, I have a print icon, a save, a download, and there's a help button. So if you get lost, click on the help and they'll help you kind of through it. And then in your menu button, you can see all of the different options that you typically would have on a document. So your split merges there. The OCR, like I said, it, it becomes like a, a reader for you if, if it has words that it can figure out and, and pull in. Um, I can look at the notifications. I can create a, a Google uh, Classroom assignment right from here. I can change what page I'm on, change the direction. I can change my view and so on. So I have lots of different options in there. Um, on the left-hand side, I'm, I told you you have all the different pages on your slides. I'm just going to make that go away right now so I can look at the toolbar that's in black down the left-hand side of your screen. I have a select tool. This gives me the arrow, or I can have a hand, or I have um, different annotation tools that I can use that are built in there. The next one down is the dictionary. The next one is text-to-speech. So if there are words, it will try to read the page for you. Is it perfect? No, but, um, but it works fairly well if you have some different text on there where it can read that to you. You can change uh, the voice to a lot of different people um, listed in there as, as well as some different languages that are available to you. Um, you can change the speed on which it's read if your student prefers it sm slower or faster or so on. The markup tool is going to let me highlight. It's going to allow me to annotate um, as far as striking through or underlining things. Um, I have different colors that I can choose as I go through and I can actually box highlight different items based on the markup tool. Comments are just what you expect them to be. I can do a text comment, I can do a voice comment, I can do a video comment on anything on the screen. A text box is just what you expect it to be. I click anywhere in here. And I can write here is a text box. As soon as I start to type in, you'll notice that all the way at the top, I've got a full uh, spread of or full suite of tools for me, all the ones you normally would see in Word or in um, Google Docs um, that you can change the font, you can change the color, um, you can change the anything that you want within there. So if I highlight this, I can change the font to whatever I'd like it to be, make it as large or as small as I want it to be. You can see how that works. I can change um, you know, how tall or short it is, that sort of thing. I can make it bold. I can change the fill to be a different color. Anything you typically would expect within um, creating text boxes are all gonna be there, as well as um, some math tools are gonna be listed in there. You can also do um, voice uh, typing where you can talk and it will type for you. So that's listed in there. And it even has emoji built in. I go down to the next one is your equation tool. So I'm still on that black toolbar down the left. Um, again, I can change the font size. I can insert some math symbols. I don't know what half of these are, but you probably do. Um, so you can go through and grab these different tools to help you out. Are they all there? Um, I did have one math teacher said most is what the, they noticed. Most of what you need are there. Um, not all of them possibly, but you certainly can take a look and figure that out for yourself. The next one down is your drawing tool. You can choose how thick or how thin you want the line to be. You can choose your color, and then anywhere that you write on the screen, it will draw and do whatever you need it to do. 
With shapes, it's exactly what you expect it to be. If you um, pick a shape, pick a color, you can draw on the screen and make different shapes. If you want to erase something, you have an eraser, um, and you can go through and erase anything that you drew on it. You can also import images, um, and then it does have a signature block that you can have a, a save signature that you can then add to it if you'd like. So you always have all of those options. So what I wanna do in the last 10 minutes or so is give you time to play. So I showed you the different tools that are there. All of you are on this document. There are tons of pages on here. So grab a tool, write on it, draw on it, try different things out on it, ask questions. You can unmute your microphone, ask questions if you have them. Um, and I'm gonna just sit back and answer whatever questions you have. I agree with Rosina, she's awesome. Um, <laughs> is this more used for elementary, middle school, high school, or specific subjects? I see more high school using it because I've had some elementary teachers say it's, it's just not uh, cutesy enough or kid-like enough for them. Uh, for the real young ones, uh, they tend to go more towards seesaw. Um, because you can do all of these same things in Seesaw. Um, the multiple pages thing is a is a upgraded feature. So um, it depends, like Seesaw, you can do a little bit more sometimes than Kami um, with the amount of pages and that sort of thing with what's free. Um, but yeah, high school loves this, especially for um, fill in the blanks, um, diagramming, um, you know, like a, they might have a plant cell and they have to you know, say the different parts of that, you know, that kind of stuff. I see that a lot in Cami. Yeah, ask your questions on the on the mic if you can, because I can't see the chat. I can go over to it, I suppose. Testing, testing. I hear you. Cool. And then for me, I can see um, who's on the different slides. If I look over on the left, so if I'm doing this collaboratively with, um, with a classroom, I can kind of see who's on what slide as far as I can see the numbers of who's where. And you can delete, you can erase, you can draw. This is okay. I just pulled in some fun different slides that show you some different ways you can upload. Seesaw is, um, I, Seesaw is mostly free. I'm gonna put it that way. They have some new features that are paid, um, but it's robust enough free that I would say it's mostly free. Hi. Um, when you want to um, when you want to write, um, would, do I use the drawing, or if there's is there another um, thing that's more like a pencil or a pen? So the drawing is going to be like your pencil or pen, but you can also do a text box if you'd rather type it in. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, I, I'm using the mouse, and I find that um, if I was on my iPad or my phone, it's a lot easier to kind of draw with your finger. Um, then using a mouse to kind of do that. And actually I didn't even bring my mouse today, so I'm using my trackpad. But um, it depends on how it works, you know, for your students. If you have a touchscreen Chromebook, a lot easier to draw on than, you know, using the mouse. But if you're using the mouse, you hold down, left click and hold to be able to, uh, to draw. Cami is fabulous on the iPad, yep. Works the same. The nice thing is um, the, ext the extension just helps you 
get to Kami and use some of the features like with a one click, um, but you don't need those on a, you know, you, you don't have them on an iPad. It'll just work on the app. Um, I was gonna say something else along those same lines with Kami. I don't remember. <laughs> Yeah, you'd have to ask your school if they'd be willing to um, install the Kami um, Chrome extension. But they can always go to Kami. You can always send them the link um, right from Kami to Google Classroom or assign it right to Google Classroom. So they don't need the extension because you're linking them to it. I downloaded the extension from your link and it went through and gave me a 30 day trial. Perfect. Yep. That's because I gave you. Um, I gave you my code. I, I put the link as my code to help you out so you can get the 30 day trial. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Is there advantage of using this over Seesaw with say taking a text and being able to have them um, underline the details and? Um, I guess it depends on, on personal preference really. Um, you know, you could do everything in Kami, you know, as far as writing on it, drawing on it, but in, in Seesaw, it allows you to do all of that at once because you can be writing on it and recording yourself. Um, so I think you capture the learning a little bit better there. I mean, you could kind of do that here too with the recording. I think it's personal preference. Okay, thanks. Sure. Yeah, they're both great. Um, they both have um, super, you know, the the, the, the all of the different uh, features within it are really intuitive. Like they're all icon based, so you can kind of figure out what they are um, or click on it. Nothing's going to break, so you can always click on it to kind of say. And you really can upload anything. I just pulled in, like I said, a, a Google slide deck um, of just some templates just to kind of show you. But you can always just do a pull, pull in a blank document, anything that you've saved. Like if you have a, a worksheet, you can always pull that in. Um, a diagramming sheet, anything like that can be pulled in. Yeah, you don't have to pay for it. Um, it just limits some of the features, like the equations don't work in the paid, um, if, you're, if you're free. I think the equation one is blocked out. All right, as we're finishing up today, because half hours go really fast, are there any other questions you have on using Kami? I mean, this is a quick overview. It's not an in-depth one for you um, by any means, but it kind of gives you an idea of how you can use it and just kind of get you started on it. So if you have any questions, you know where to reach me. Um, I don't think I put my, I have to put my information in there, but here is my email. If you ever need it, just email me, let me know. I'm happy to help in any way. All right, I'm gonna stop recording. If you have any other questions, you're welcome to stay on. 